Yo, what's up guys? Triple over here and welcome to Fun Friday. Today I decided to go with, you know, a short and simple video, which is um, pitch meeting. I really enjoy pitch meetings and I want to see if you guys enjoy it too. So this is, let me just explain the premise of this. The whole thing is kind of like a movie review, but in the form of, I wonder how this movie was pitched, you know. Um, this is on the Screen Rant uh, YouTube channel. Today, well, three days ago, they launched Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End peak pitch meeting. So if you haven't watched this specific pitch meeting before, or if you haven't watched this movie before and you don't want any spoilers, um, I must warn you, there are spoilers. Um, in any case, if you guys are not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I haven't watched this one before. That's why I'm going to watch it now. So I hope you guys have fun because today is Fun Friday. <laughs> let's go. So you have a new Pirates movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So you know how the last one just kind of ended with nothing being resolved? Yeah, that's right. Jack Sparrow died and Barbosa returned from the dead, and then we just kind of cut to black. We sure did, sir, and by doing that, we pretty much ensured that people would come see this one. Because we kind of violated the concept of what constitutes a movie. That's right, I remember. So what happens <laughs> in this one? Oh. Yeah, but then again, it's called a cliffhanger, right? <laughs> We're gonna start. But I know, I know. I, I hate it when movies do that because it's a movie. It's not series. You know, a movie has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And if if you end on a cliffhanger, you're like, ah, you get so angry, especially because the movie takes, what, a year to make? Start this one off real strong. Amazing. By hanging a child. Oh, my God, what? Yeah, see that bad guy, Beckett? He's just hanging <laughs> a bunch of pirates, and they're going to start singing a song, which for some reason is going to call on the nine pirate lords to convene. Oh, there are pirate lords? Yeah, it turns out pirates have an intricate political system with lords and kings, and both Jack and Barbosa are pirate lords. How'd they become pirate lords? Unclear, but so they need to go <laughs> get Jack from Davy Jones's locker so he can convene with the other pirate lords. How do they plan? on getting there. Well, they go get these navigational charts from this other pirate lord in Singapore. Okay. So they follow these charts and they suddenly go over this massive waterfall that shows up out of nowhere and that leads them to Davy Jones's locker. The massive waterfall wasn't mentioned on the map? No, because this way it's a fun surprise for the movie. Oh, nice of the cartographers to consider the audience. So then we're going to meet <laughs> up with Jack in Davy Jones's locker, which is a very strange place. Oh, it is? Yeah, he's got like a bunch of other Jack Sparrows in there with him and he has a ship and there are a bunch of rocks that are actually crabs. So is this like a spiritual place or a physical place? Yes. Didn't the Kraken yes. swallow him at the end of the last movie? What happened there? Did the Kraken poop him out? Unclear, but speaking of the Kraken, it's gonna die. Oh man, it's gonna be- Just before he continues, this reminds me of The Matrix, you know, when Neo got stuck in a world and, you know. Unclear, but speaking of the Kraken, it's gonna die. Oh man, it's gonna be cool to see the Kraken get killed. That thing was intense. Yeah, definitely. Gonna happen off screen though. Oh. Yeah, it kind of just happened in between movies. We're gonna see its dead body on the beach though. Okay. So anyway, the gang all heads into Davy Jones's locker to get Jack, and then they need to figure out- His expression is so priceless, you know, the way he's disappointed. And I love his, his intonation in this pitch meetings. Ryan George is a genius. For, for making this. If you don't know who Ryan George is, he is Jack Ryan George. Okay. So anyway, the gang all heads into Davy Jones's locker to get Jack, and then they need to figure out how to get back to the land of the living. So this is a physical place then, because people can physically go between there and the real world. Yeah, except no, not really. Oh, I'm very <laughs> confused. So then they manage to get back to the world of the living by oh, flipping I'm their ship confused. at sunset, which is how this works for some reason. Wow, so death really isn't permanent in these movies, huh? It's all very vague, sir, which allows us to bring main characters back from the dead, but also not do that for minor characters. Their own fault for being minor characters, I guess. They should have known better for sure. So then they're going to go to the Brethren Court on Shipwreck Cove and meet with all the pirate lords. And what's going to happen there? Oh, just a massive scene talking about the pirate code and pirate politics. Oh, yeah, the pirates have very strict and intricate rules and everybody has to obey them. If there's one 
This reminds me of Star Wars with all the politics as well. One thing people know about pirates is that they're all about rules. Yeah, there's actually going to be a <laughs> ton of talking in this movie. Every dialogue scene is going to last about 10 minutes of people explaining Sarcasm. who they're backstabbing and why. Oh, did you need to pad the runtime a bit or something? Nope, the movie's going to be three hours long. Oh my god. Oh, also I thought we could have Keith Richards cameo as Jack's father since Johnny Depp based the character on him. Oh, that's very exciting. What are we going to have Keith do? Oh, you're going to like this a lot. He's also gonna talk about politics. Extremely fun. Oh, it also turns out that dog that keeps popping up, that's his dog. Wasn't that dog left on the cannibal island at the end of the last movie? Yeah, maybe this dog is magic. I don't know. We're just gonna kind of go all in on the magic stuff, because <laughs> maybe that's what people liked about the first movie, hopefully. Jeez, I hope that's what they liked about it. Fingers crossed. So then we're also gonna find out that that Tia Dalma lady from the last movie, she's actually this goddess named Calypso. Oh. And there's this whole thing between her and Davy Jones, where they were in love and she's the reason he cut his heart out. Pretty unhealthy relationship. For sure. And so since Calypso brought Barbosa back Indeed. from the dead, he's gonna release her from her human form, which all the pirate lords put her in. And what does that do? Oh, well, she turns into a giant and then a bunch of crabs and then she makes a whirlpool thing. You know, those do sound like things that may as well happen. It's all nautical and magical, so it does feel right. Yeah, then there's gonna be this big ship battle against Davy Jones. Oh, our I love his sarcasm. It's so, it's so on point. Physics gonna be a thing? Not at all. Amazing. Yeah, we're gonna keep doing that thing where if Jack Sparrow cuts a rope, that turns him into Spider-Man. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. <laughs> and then we're gonna have this really wacky scene where Will and Elizabeth, they make Barbosa marry them in the middle of a big fight. Weren't they in a weird place after she kissed Jack in the last movie? What led to them getting over their differences? Well, the movie's almost over, sir. Oh, okay, yeah, gotta wrap that up for sure then. So then eventually Davy Jones is gonna stab Will Turner in the heart. Very rude. But there's this thing Very where if you rude. stab Davy Jones, Jones's heart, you become immortal, but you also have to captain the Flying Dutchman ship. Oh, so this is another one of the death loopholes. Yeah, we got a ton of those. So then even though Jack wanted to be immortal himself, he makes Will stab the heart to save his life. Oh, a very considerate stabbing. So then the ship sinks, but then it pops back up with Will as the captain, and he has a fun bandana now, which I guess he found at the bottom of the sea. Oh, underwater bandanas are tight. So then they have to go up against Beckett's ship, and this thing has cannons on both sides. Oh man, it's gonna be tough have to take that down. Actually, it's gonna be super, super easy. easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, both the Flying Dutchman and the Black Pearl attack from opposite sides, so this thing just gets ruined. But you said it had a bunch of cannons on both sides. Yeah, but it didn't use them at all. Why not? <laughs> well, because Beckett was busy having one of the coolest looking death scenes ever put to film. Oh, he was. Yeah, he's just gonna slowly and gracefully walk oh, yeah. around the ship as every bit of it explodes right behind him after every step and all around him. It's gonna look incredible. The cannonballs just keep hitting everything but him and the ship being actively destroyed doesn't affect his balance at all. Yeah, well, physics and probabilities aren't a thing in this movie. I'll Wait a second. I had never thought of that. I mean, of course, um, he didn't even, you know, stumble. But let's watch that scene again. Come on. It is really one of the coolest scenes ever. Film. Oh, he was. Yeah, he's just gonna slowly and gracefully walk around the ship as every bit of it explodes right behind him after every step and all around him. It's gonna look incredible. The cannonballs just keep hitting everything but him and the ship being actively destroyed doesn't affect his balance at all. Yeah, well, physics and probabilities aren't a thing in this movie. Also, it's gonna look incredible. Well, okay, great. And so then all the other ships from the as East India Trading good. Company, they're like, all right, bye then. Why don't they attack? Do they not have as many ships as the pirates? Oh, yeah, no, they have like hundreds more ships than them. So then why do they leave? Well, the movie's pretty much done, so we're gonna do that thing where when the main ship is destroyed, all the other bad guys just aren't a threat anymore. Oh, okay, gotcha. So then Will's gonna impregnate Elizabeth. Oh my god. But then because of his new curse, he has to leave, and he's only allowed to come back on land once every ten years. And there's no way around that? Nope. Very sad. Well, I mean, we did show Davy Jones standing in a bucket of water on land earlier, so I guess he could do that if he wanted to. <laughs> but Will's not gonna do that. No, he's not gonna do that for some reason. Well, okay then. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a nice end to the trilogy, you know, really close the chapter on these pirates movies, right? I'm just kidding. I'm going to need you to end this one by setting up a sequel. Will do, sir. Pirates of the Caribbean. Four. Hey everybody, Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you liked it, feel free to click the like button and the subscribe button and all, you know, buttons of that nature. There are also like hundreds of other episodes on the channel that you can check out if you want. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what other movies you want to see pitches for. And check back soon for a new one, because there's going to be new ones, you know? I sure will. Click on that like button. I'm already subscribed.
And every time he launches something new, it is so exciting because um, I really enjoy his humor. I really enjoy the way he is so sarcastic when he's talking about something that is really obvious. And, you know, it, it's a fun way of, you know, learning more about the movie, um, having a movie review with that idea. You know what? I wonder how they actually pitched for this movie. And then, you know, he makes a, a comedic um, review out of it. There are many, many movies um, that he has done a pitch meeting for. So if you guys want me to react to any of them, let me know in the comments down below. But be sure to check out his channel and, you know, watch all of his pitch meetings. I, I know that I have been bin, binge watching many of his pitch meetings and they're all, all fun. And I've, I've watched, I think my favorite one is the Game of Thrones one season eight <laughs> so many so many references um it's better when you actually just like you watch the movie and after you watch the movie go watch ryan george you're gonna pick up a lot of references and it's gonna make you laugh and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on that notification bell like this video and if you guys have any ideas for um fun fridays for next week let me know in the comments Peace out. I'll see you guys. Take care now. Bye-bye.